Welcome to the next project. Today I'm continuing with the headstock modification of the Harley Benton SC guitar kit. Uh, in the last episode, I took the standard uh, headstock and I plugged the tuner holes. And in this episode, I'll be cutting away material and adding new material to square it up. So it will have uh, a usable paddle shape uh, that I can uh, later veneer, uh, create a template and cut out the new headstock shape. But uh, for today, we're going to go basically from this shape to this shape. So let's start the next project. And as I get things going, the first thing I do is find a center line. And now I'm marking up the area I want to cut away. And next, I have a block of wood that I have a center line marked on, on the ends across this face. I'm going to tape it to the face of the headstock using that center line. I'm going to line them up. And then when I go to cut this, I'm going to use uh, a chop saw basically, and this will be lined up and centered. So I'll be able to put this edge up against the fence, and the saw will come down square to that line. With the uh, centering block taped to the headstock, I'm easily able to use the fence on this saw to get a nice square cut on the end of the headstock. And here I'm cutting a piece of hard maple, uh, just making a little scrap that I will use to add on to the end of the headstock to add the extra length I need. And as you've seen from watching my videos, I love using this uh, double-sided pattern tape for just about everything I can. It doesn't take the place of a vice grip, but it works really well for things like this. And in this case, I am cutting the mating surface of the uh, headstock addition piece that I'm going to be putting on. Now I'm cutting the mating edge on the extension piece that will go on the end of the headstock, matching the same stair step cut, which will receive the glue, so I can glue the end grain of the headstock and this extension piece together. I always try to remember to test fit things, uh, make sure I have all my clamps together before I start gluing. Doesn't always work that way, but that's the plan. And things usually go better when I do test fit and uh, make sure everything is in place before I start gluing. A new piece is grafted onto the headstock, and as you can see, I keyed it, kind of stair-stepped it on. Uh, that's to give me a sense it's a butt joint, uh, end grain to end grain. I was able to get a little bit more glue area this way, so it should be a little bit stronger. So anyway, I need to thickness this so it's the same thickness all the way along, or really close to it. Uh, so then I can cut it and put new wings on the sides. Uh, the reason I want to do that is when I cut the new shape, I don't want um, the tuner holes to be on the outside edge of the cut as it run down. So I'm going to shave this down, glue new wings on the side in the same process that I did this uh, end cap. So how do I go about 
thicknessing this. There's a number of things I could do. I could take a fine hand saw, shave a little bit off, and clean it up with a file or something, uh, sandpaper. Uh, I can use a hand chisel, which would probably work really well. This is hard maple, but I think a sharp hand chisel will cut through it quite easily. And there's not much to go there, maybe a sixteenth of an inch on each side for the headstock. Uh, I could use a hand plane, which would work pretty well. I might give that a try. Uh, I could put my, clamp this down and run my router across the top of it. That would do it also. My neighbors wouldn't like that, though, because it's pretty late at night. I can hear a train going by right now, too. Wonderful. There'll be an airplane flying over any minute now. Uh, so anyway, let's get this started. I decided to use a hand plane because it was uh, easily within reach and it didn't make any noise and it, uh, the process went pretty fast. The cleanup is minimal. The one thing I wish I would have done different uh, would be how I mounted it to my bench because it did slide around a little bit. It was secure but it wanted to, wanted to move a little bit. Since the neck does have a fretboard attached to it, I need to accommodate for the thickness of the fretboard by adding that quarter inch piece of MDF. That way the fretboard doesn't bind into the sled that I'm using here or any other cutting device. Repeating the process to cut away the excess on the other side of the headstock. The paper template I have there is just a sample so I know roughly how wide I need to make the replacement wings to go on the headstock. more double-sided pattern tape and sticking that uh, headstock wing wedge to my little sled that I slide through the table saw to uh, evenly divide the piece in half. And now I'm going through the process of cutting the stair step mating surface uh, that I'll use to glue the wings to the headstock. Test fit and clamp everything together again and then start gluing things together. The stepped edges in my uh, glue up lumber was probably a little bit overkill, but I wanted to be sure that I'd have a strong glue up surface and also minimize any ghost line coming through my veneer or any finish that I would put on the headstock. And this kind of a glue up joint, I only leave the clamps on for about an hour, maybe a little bit more. Uh, that is enough time for the tight bond to set up and hold uh, very rigidly. I don't do any cutting or other finish work uh, for about a full day though.
planting the top of the headstock was really quite awkward and in hindsight I should have just uh, jumped to my next step and knocked the extra wood down using my router as a planer basically. And this shows where I could have skipped the last bit of hand planing and just used the router to uh, surface the face of the headstock down to the final dimension. Always do things the hard way. With the face of the headstock taped facing down on the table, that causes the neck to kick up higher in the back, which in effect runs into my clear router plate. So I had to make the uh, sides that my router plate uh, slide on a little bit taller. And to wrap things up, I double check my overall thickness once I've planed it to make sure uh, I don't have to do any more. And things measure out good, so we're ready to create a template and to start cutting the new shape. Hope you enjoyed the video, and stay tuned. There's more coming soon.